guys, let's figure out what the hell to do in this anything anything but destroy the bleeder. Okay, well, so in the in the all right. If I am just going to keep fucking harping on the relationship between this game and Mist, but if we think about Mist, uh, there was a, a a sort of a meta puzzle uh, that is not formally presented to us. I forget exactly how you're meant to stumble upon to the, the meta puzzle, but if you solve it, then you discover that there is actually, you know, there's a there's a whole way of doing things other than what is. So the way presented. you discover the meta puzzle in Mist is by reading all the books. Right. Okay. So okay. mostly reading. Okay. So so mostly here's what I've done. I've unplugged the bleeder, which Good. was his thing, or I've unplugged the thing that he was excited about. Now, if you recall, we went to the Mofang world, and in the Mofang world. It was total molten devastation. Like, it actually right. looks dissimilar from this purpley area, because this is actually purpley, and on the other side it was actually just, like, charred black and nothingness, and when we did the swap, it was bad. So what I've done is I've actually, I've unplugged the battery, which I have no idea if this does anything, but I've unplugged the battery, guys. What? Well, okay, so if... So... I, just kind of like based on the fact that we already did it wrong once. Uh, the there was a there's a town on Earth, and uh, and Earth was gonna blow up, and so they swapped the town on Earth with like a similar space on another planet. Yeah, and that place died, and the town on Earth survived, but it's no longer on Earth. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, All right. Like, so, where's he going? So, like, he's like, like, he goes. There he goes. Again. Like, I Wait, unplugged the battery. Are you because... seeing something happening? Oh shit! Oh, it's yellow instead of red. See. So these things have been fl flying around the battery. And he said, oh, well, plugged in the battery, so. Spend much time here, and that ain't a bad thing. So I just Fine. pulled the battery in. Some real fine folk. So there's clearly some sort of devastation that happened on the I earth reckon, we saw in the Mofang world. I reckon you got the best seat in the house. Right. So he, uh, 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 this is long. Tell, tell us what's happening. So I unplugged this battery thing. Right. No, before. sorry, not you, Sean. I mean the character in the game who's just sort of stuttering. But yes, okay. So you unplugged the battery. Yeah. So, so he told you to like construct a battery and plug it in and then blow stuff up and uh, and you didn't do follow all of the instructions exactly and now we're gonna teleport to somewhere random oh sorry Well, why the fuck was that the right thing to do? What's that? I don't know. I can't believe that this had a different effect. Wait. I'll, I'll pay you. Harley. She got it right. What? She got it right. What did she get right? Chunk loading error. So, 
so the point is that CW was an idiot, and if you did his plan, then uh, you ended up on dead earth. Uh, all you have to do is not plug in his battery. But his, but but Farley had done something different. The breathing intensifies. Um. Help! Help! No, we're stuck in the tower for the rest of our lives. We're gonna starve pretty soon. Do, 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 do. Too bad you didn't read the novel that's inside the video game. Do, 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 do. It was a complete side quest that gives the game its entire meaning. You've solved the puzzles and you've beaten the game, but you got nothing out of it. Do, 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 because the game's designed that way. It's time to go to Wikipedia to find it sounds out like, what the okay, fuck so just it sounds happened. Like, it sounds like some aliens, some like, some aliens went around and found a bunch of worlds that were about to blow up. I'm looking up abduction and they endings while saved, you're doing that. They saved parts of those worlds to seed a new how you, planet? How do you know that? Somebody in chat told me. Oh, don't read the chat. Don't read the chat. Don't read well, the chat. Well, I mean, I we're done with the game now. Like, what? Yeah. I mean, unless you want to go on your own time and play it again and read all the shit. And I mean, yeah, can we just say something no about the design? Way that I would do that. Can we just say something yes, about yeah, the design of the game that, do. like, you can get through the game and, like, not get any narrative out of it because the Shit. narrative is all like, in these fucking like side quest things I, it, it, so I mean like the the story might be amazing and it is presented like it's accessible it's not that like we couldn't have gotten yeah that. it's um, too bad that the story wasn't core to the interactivity yeah it's it I mean, is entirely Jesus. separate from the game yeah. It's just presented, it happens to be presented in parallel, which yeah. I is is a real problem. Like, that's something that is, like, that's that's an issue, I think, in design. When you, uh, when you try to uh, make a point or tell a story, uh, when your procedural rhetoric, when the, the, the argument that the game is making... Uh, is not tied into the thing that you want to say. I'd argue that, like, that what this game tell. is saying is that what this game is saying, if I had to read this, what we just played, yeah, thematically, I would say that it is something along the lines of... Let's see, you can do... Like, you can save the world. Uh, what, what am I trying to figure out here? It's something about, like... I don't know if I can phrase this properly. It's something about the... The complete... The, what stands out most to me is the complete separation between actions and agency and the understanding and contextualization of those actions. So it says something to me about how a how as a protagonist in a game, maybe in a different kind of story also, you can go through all the motions and save the world and not know what the and fuck And not you're feel doing. anything. Be like, I guess I saved the people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, okay, oh. so can I just can I just say from a from a like procedural rhetoric standpoint, um Sean saw like there were a couple of puzzles that you were supposed to need to read books in order to solve right they would have been easier if we had found the book Th these are these are there were a couple of like 
you know, Rad 4 related uh, mm-hmm. puzzles that um, that that would have been easier if we had found the books that like laid out information about how to solve them. Uh, but Sean didn't. He like he solved those fucking puzzles. He was a monster, and it like it felt really good. It was really like it felt yeah. like we were doing something that we were really smart. And by by that feeling of of achievement for us actually runs entirely counter to the relationship that the game wants us to have with the reading material. If the game had been uh, about tightly integrating the solutions to puzzles with the books that you find around, the all of the, the written yeah. stuff. And so in order to solve puzzles, you had to go around and like research things and search through books, not just for codes, but for like understanding, co- conceptual yeah. understanding of, of concepts. And that incidentally to that you are receiving you're getting all of the like context and historical whatever in the background narrative and you understand what's going on the relationships between people like that would make perfect fucking sense to me but researching researching should be the mechanic researching should be what you do and and there was a there was a there was kind of an attempt to do that but it was not pervasive and it was undermined by the fact that it wasn't actually like necessary it's possible to solve the puzzles without looking at the books and if you do that you feel good about yourself you feel better like like we were really excited (laughs) Yeah. You felt, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, see, and, but you were actually playing the game wrong. Like, the, yeah, the, 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 that's really fucked and up. There's, that it there's gives that, you those there's, kind of signals. There's that old design concept that Tracy said that I still think about, which is yeah. the way to strategically pl- the the most optimal strategic way to play the game should be the most fun. Right. Yeah. Um, which in this case. We beat the game. We did a relatively clean. Well, I mean, it's, well, it's more efficient for us to beat the game without reading the books. Right. It turns out that's also less fun, which means that's a problem in the game. Well, like I, I, I just, I think for me, the thing is that I, I had a hard time ever getting a grip of what the game was. Like, I'm gonna take the yeah. Nancy Drew games, which, like, I felt completely confused until I was like, oh, I get it now. I call Beth and George, and I just keep cycling through the same four locations, and time just right. progresses and new things happen. And like, if you just get that, you just stuff just is happening all the time and it's really cool and i i feel fine with that it feels like really good um i this is part of the reason i want to play another nancy drew game is that like we struggled so much until we got what the game was and i feel like this is true for right. most games like i mean moba games that they, they're fun but it's not exactly what you think would be the fun rts games like starcraft they're not really about figuring out the right thing to build. It's just like managing a giant disorganization engine, and that's the fun of it, right? It's like there's tons of games where it's completely obtuse what the actual fun of the game is. But because the games are focused, if you do something other than that, it doesn't give you any rewards, right? It doesn't, like, let you progress. And then when you start to get into the rhythm, you start to actually make massive progress. And that was the thing that I think was weird for me, is I never quite understood did exactly what I was supposed to be doing. And then there was all the wonderful, like, stepping into the new world, seeing the new world, getting a mechanism to actually yeah. function. And then once we got the mechanisms to actually function in the second world, I was like, oh my gosh, wonderful. And then we got into this, like, third world that was nothing but world swapping. And I was like, huh, okay. And the second world, uh, the first world was like, read a lot of books. And then enter a lot of numbers into keypads, and then the Mofang world was just go into the tree. I don't know. It, it, there was, I will still, I still feel like it was very nearly one of the awesomest games ever. Like, mm, but yeah. it just oh gosh, because I mean, definitely like, missed the mark. Man, oh man. I mean, I um, my sense of it is that it it's burdened by uh, a history. Uh, of of mist of what like yeah. games were in the moment uh, where mist was released and mist was innovative it was like radically uh, different from the like the yeah. things that were were on the market at the time and this is a game that is sort of beholden to that radical innovation of 25 years ago 
so it 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 has a hard time actually progressing. It has a hard time living in the the moment of games today and pushing uh, forward what games can be today. Uh, but at the same time, it's you know it can't be what it was 25 years ago i mean like it's we've moved on from that it gets, well, it gets i actually stuck like to... the design of mist like because the design of mist yeah, was just dead fucking clear what your goals were it's like welcome to this world in this world there is a red book and a blue book or excuse me a red page and a blue page find the two pages and i felt very clear forward progress throughout that you know um because there were clear areas that you couldn't see, and you were always looking for one or two of the pages. Like, I felt really great when we played Mist all the way through. Um, yeah. There was this other yeah, thing that It's just, like, seems, abundantly clear what, what, what was going on throughout the game. Like, we're sort yeah. of stuck in the pattern that was established in Mist, which is, um, trust the books. Make your own decisions based on the infallibility of the books, and don't listen to the person stuck in the thing who's going to lead you astray and give you the bad ending like that's right it's just so clear and it's um w were there a lot of <laughs> solutions to puzzles in the books in mist oh i guess there were yeah there were hints but there weren't straight up solutions for i think part. there there's like i feel like there's there's okay so one of my favorite topics ever is the is the difference between craft and art when you're working on like a creative project Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like, I'm going to take Bioshock because I think there's a lot of things that I sort of wish from Bioshock were in Abduction. Where in Bioshock, the art side of things, the creative, unique, amazing, the unique New York, the special snowflake about Bioshock is like this world under the sea, right? Yeah. The crazy stuff that has happened there. But then there's bits of craft, and I really feel like the craft things are properly managing the logical thought trains of your player. Like, everything was dark and seedy and really, it was actually, like, really dark throughout the whole game, except for objects you could pick up or interact with, with which glinted in a, in a light yellow gold. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this gave you a real clarity as to like, oh, all this stuff is just prop scenery, but that's an important thing because it's glinting yellow gold. Or the um, recordings that you could pick up that gave you story bits. The game very clearly, I mean, I, I, I would have to replay to really identify it, but at no point in the game are things that were in the recordings critical to make progress in the game. It was very clearly just enrichment about the story. Right. So I was able to mentally separate what was happening in the game with these tidbits that there were in the story. And they reinforced each other, but there was no logical conflation. Recordings are about story and story development and world building and not secrets and clues that are necessary for progress. And things that are in the game that are necessary for progress are visually represented there in the game. And I feel like as we were playing through Abduction, there were things that were happening where... In the book, lots of the book content was backer content, was enrichment story stuff, and some of it was critical to advance. And so I actually didn't quite have a mental model to know what's important and what's not important. And I think that that's mm -hmm. like really, really critical. Like when I'm in a game of Bioshock and I'm walking here and I'm walking along, and there's nothing bright and glinting. There's no monsters. I know that I'm just looking at beautiful stuff. I'm at a low. And then when mm -hmm. things start to spike up or there's a door that won't open and there's like a lock on it, I go, oh, that's the one important thing. And there's a spike and the spikes bring attention to me. But the fact that I, I, I had no sense in abduction of what I needed to pay attention to and not pay attention to, it felt like everything was important. And it was so hard for me to sift through such a large world where everything's important. And now that we've beaten the game, most of the game was not important. Most of the game was non-interactable, just beautiful landscape. But I didn't know that, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like looking for yeah. hidden clues because sometimes in the book there's a clue and sometimes on the wall there's a clue and sometimes the license plates hold the key to like putting in the numbers and sometimes there's a symbol here that you need to remember over there. You know, it's like... 
And, and I feel like it's it, that was probably the biggest frustration that I had is that if there was just a little more clarity as to what collections of objects fell into what category, like these are just story objects. These are clues. These are the interactable puzzle bits. I think I would have given it like 10 out of 10. Hmm. Well, that's my rants in a pants. Yeah. I mean, I can't disagree with that, except I don't know that I would ever have given it a 10 out of 10, but I think that's just, that's down to, like, like game preference stuff. Sick. Sick. There you go. Well, Abduction. it's slain. Currently, it's currently 9-11 from heaven. I don't know if you guys uh, have any, or it's now it's 9-12 from health. Um, so we can actually do a little bit of an early ending. Uh, do you guys have anything you want to close out on? Or just like some final thoughts on abduction? Uh, I mean, I think I'd say just beware, game designers. Um, make your content, like, make your content key to the completion of the game, or there is a high likelihood that it will not be absorbed or, you know, encountered by the player. You know, I, I've been using this this a lot lately, but I feel like it works. <laughs> I'm gonna play the shit out of Abduction Two. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah. And I use the same thing before. I'll play the shit out of No Man's Sky Two. Right? Like, I feel like there is there is such a unique, amazing flair to Abduction that I don't see like anywhere else. I have not played a game like Abduction in a decade. Or I should say that was released in the last decade. That is similar to Abduction. It's just this crazy ass world. Like, wow. And there were some of those pieces that were unrefined. In the same way that wow. No Man's Sky fully procedurally generated universe. Missing a lot. right? But I feel like it's the sort of stepping stone work. That's important to have there. So that way the next thing is going to be really good. Mm -hmm. I'm very very excited. So so yeah, I feel that way about No Man's Sky. I don't feel that way about Abduction. Because I think Abduction is... I mean, the people who made it have been making Mist, Riven, Mist 3, all that stuff. Like, this is not a new venture. This is a spiritual successor that did not shine as brightly for me. And so, it, and, and frankly, like, I don't know, a lot of the stuff was pretty tropey. Like, we went through Protoss land, we went through Team Fortress 2 land, we went through... Like, I don't know. Just, you know. I, I mean, I think that's a good point, Bill. I think that, I, frankly, I think what happened here is this is a game that's got one foot stuck firmly in the past, and uh, and it can't overcome that. And, I, you know, I don't know what to do about that. I mean, this game would not exist if not for the legacy of... Uh, science previously game previous games um, but at the same time I feel like maybe they got too caught up in that in in giving people uh, you know another taste of what mist was and yeah. I, I, I feel like this fails to iterate on the formula in like actually positive uh uh, innovative ways. I think the ways that it's iterating are ultimately not beneficial. Well, there you go. <laughs> Sick. <sighs> so picky, Come here, dude. So Come here. I just hate everything. Games. Ouch. Games. Ouch. I'm back. Uh, Jesus. Uh, uh, maybe. Okay. So uh, Eve White says maybe Abduction Two should be a book. I like. I feel like if the Miller brothers wanted to create a uh, a, a ship of Theseus style like multimedia reading experience, uh, I would be fucking on board with that. That would be awesome. Wait, wait, yeah. what's the experience that you would be, like, down with? 
Do you, Sean, are you aware that J.J. Abrams, like, uh, p- p- produced or published or something, a book that is either called S or Ship of Theseus? It comes in a in a binding that, uh, fuck, hold on one second. Is it, yeah, hold on. Mm. Okay. So this is, um... This is the book S. It looks like this. Wow. Uh, but if you pull it out of the sleeve, you see that you actually got the wrong book. You got a book called Ship of Theseus, which is a library book, you can tell. And if you open it up, then uh, it's, it says book for loan. There's a... I thought there was a... Um, I'm so ready. Oh, yeah. There's out. like a... There's a... On the back, There's you can see how it's been checked out and shit like that. And if you open it up, like if you flip through, you can see, first of all, like the text in here has been marked all the fuck to hell. Like it's been written and rewritten by a bunch of different readers. And yeah. then it's also full of uh, like cards and huh. like here's a postcard from Brazil for some reason. Uh, there's a bunch of postcards from Brazil. Here's a, like, some kind of a dial that you can spin, and it's probably used for mm. codes. Like, it's, there's a bunch of, there's, like, photocopied text that's in here. Like, it's a, it's a, it's a puzzle book, right? Mm-hmm. It's wow. a J.J. Abrams-style, uh, mystery world narrative. Uh, it's just, instead of a TV show, it's a book. Cool. And I feel like the the Millers could do a picture book, Dinotopia, or um, fuck, what was the one? Eleventh Hour, like a, a an eleventh hour style. The seventh guest, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 like a like a children's book, like fully illustrated children's mystery book in the style of S or the 11th hour that uh, was created by the Rand, uh, the, the Millers, I think would be fucking amazing. Yeah. Like I would and, kickstart that shit. And I bet that they might find that suggestion to be an interesting and refreshing idea. Well, and That's I think theory. it's also like the production. I mean, that would be a, uh, it would be so expensive to create and produce and ship and but blah, if, blah, if blah. But if we just I mean, state ideas whatever. and never consider the yeah. real world implications of them, we get to just be cool. Yeah. I, l- I like that. We also, I mean, why didn't anybody else think of this, huh? Huh? Uh, why, you yeah. just gotta, you, uh, you're waiting for us to think of all your ideas for you? Just too many gates. Come on, guys. Come on, everybody. Well, real. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go get some tacos, guys. So it was a pleasure right. having concluded the game. And uh, I think we've already decided on what the next game is. Yeah? The Curse of Did Monkey we? Island. Oh, fuck oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that... Wait, wait, wait. Is that... Is that what is that? Two or three? That's or OG four? one. I think that's the original one. No. That I'm sorry. Secret, Secret of Monkey Island. Yeah, no, we're doing the whatever oh. the first one is. Yeah. Whatever the first one is. All right, what, we'll whatever the first one is ever. But guys, uh, the Carf and Mofang can go suck a fat one. Am I right? Guys, I'm Sean Plus. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, God. Always a pleasure. All right. Sick. Uh, and tomorrow we're going to do a show midday sometime because in the morning I need to do my civic responsibility and vote. And in the evening I have to watch as a responsible civic member and go, holy fucking shit, this election. Am I right? Oh, do it yourselves tomorrow. Will the world end? Nobody knows. I think there's gonna be a riot. So, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, uh oh.